Growing up, me and my best friend James used to love going over to his grandmother's house for the weekend. The two of us loved to skateboard and right next to her house she had a really steep hill for us to bomb down. And on top of that, she lived right next door to a convenience store so that we could stock up on all the snacks we needed. And then after hours, when the store was closed, the two of us would often go and skate in the parking lot, using the curb and parking rails as obstacles to practice our tricks on and over. It really was a bunch of fun, except for the time that we had been stalked by these two guys in an old brown panel van. It all started earlier that day. It was a Saturday and the two of us were doing our thing, just skating around and trying to keep out of trouble, when we noticed this van that had been driving behind us. As we rode down the big hill that I mentioned, the two of us figured that we must have been in their way, so we slowed ourselves down and pulled off to the side of the road to give them room to pass. But to our surprise, they stopped right behind us. We looked over at the two men and they were clearly staring at us, but they didn't say anything. So after a minute, the two of us just shrugged and began skating down the hill again. Thankfully, the van didn't pull out behind us, at least not at first. It wasn't until about five minutes later, when we had made it to the bottom of the hill and back to his grandmother's house, that we saw the van slowly drive by. James and I were confused, but we didn't really think anything of it. We spent the next few hours helping his grandpa cut and stack firewood while James's grandmother cooked dinner for all of us and we couldn't be certain, but we both swore that we saw the same van drive by at least three more times. It was really strange, but when all was said and done, we finished our work and ate some food before getting back out on our skateboards. Nightfall came and the deli next door to James's grandparents' house closed. As the two of us were skating outside, we said goodnight to the store owners and they told us to be safe before heading off in their car. The two of us continued to skate and listen to music for a few more hours before we both stopped as we noticed something in the distance. It was hard to notice because the headlights weren't on, but across the street and down the road a little bit. James and I could clearly see the van that had driven by multiple times before and it was almost like they knew we spotted them because as soon as we stopped skating, their headlights turned on. The van slowly began to make its way down the street toward the two of us and we didn't even have to say anything to each other. Before we both knew what we had to do, James and I quickly grabbed our backpacks and our boards and started sprinting through the grass behind the convenience store toward James's grandparents' house. We could hear the sound of the van speeding up before we heard what was certainly one of the doors opening and closing as one of the men hopped out of it and began chasing after us. James and I luckily made it through the yard and into the safety of his grandparents' home and locked the door behind us. James pulled his phone out of his pocket and quickly began dialing 911 as I looked out of the kitchen window toward the street where I saw the van and someone getting back into the passenger side. Once he was inside, the van quickly drove off, leaving skid marks on the street as they tore away. The police showed up and we explained to them and James's grandparents what happened to us and they said they would be on the lookout for a brown panel van. But as far as we know, the van wasn't found and neither were the two men who were following us around that afternoon. I used to love spending the night at my friend's house. I didn't have siblings, so it was a lot of fun to have someone to hang out with all day. However, I quickly stopped going to sleepovers after I went to my friend Ray's house. You see, Ray had this one neighbor that always seemed like he was staring at us from his house. And one night things got a little too creepy for my liking and I figured it's probably best I just sleep at home where I know I'm safe. It was toward the end of summer vacation between 5th and 6th grade and Ray had invited me over to spend the night. He had just gotten the new call of duty and we were going to play split screen all night. I got to Ray's relatively early in the afternoon that day, and after I had been dropped off and settled in, the two of us decided to go hang out in the yard for a bit while there was still a couple of hours of daylight. Whenever I would hang out over at Ray's, the two of us would always spend a lot of time either near the stream behind his house or jumping on the trampoline that he had set up in the backyard. We spent about an hour jumping that day before we noticed it. Ray was the one to point it out, but as soon as he did, I could clearly see his neighbor sitting on his porch and looking across the yard in our direction. We tried to ignore him for a while, but no matter how much we pretended that he wasn't there, it was like I could feel his eyes on us. 
They were unwavering, and aside from going inside, there was nothing that we could do to pry them away from us. Ray's dad had spoken to him a few times about looking over at his son, but because he was technically not doing anything wrong, there was really nothing to be done aside from putting a small fence around their yard and cameras outside their doors. So after a little while of trying to ignore his neighbor, Ray, and I decided the sun was going down anyway, so why not head inside and have some dinner? We went inside and let Ray's parents know about the neighbor, which sent them on a rant about how irritating it was that they had a neighbor like that. Ray and I finished our dinner as we planned the rest of the night and what game we would start off playing first. And as we previously discussed, it was time for a Call of Duty marathon. As we played, time began to fly by and before we knew it, Ray's parents had gone to bed. And when we looked at the clock, it read 11 p.m. This. As we played, time began to fly by and before we knew it, Ray's parents had gone to bed. And when we looked at the clock, it read 11 p.m. This was only the beginning of our night, though we planned on staying up the entire evening playing. Sadly, that all came to an end. While we were between games, we were in the lobby waiting for the matchmaking to cue us up in another game, and Ray looked up toward the clock, which happened to be positioned next to the window of their house. What he saw caused him to practically throw his controller and let out a loud shriek. He pointed to the window and began saying in a shaky voice that he had just seen his neighbor. Ray said that he was watching us through the window, but when I looked over, I didn't see anything. I quickly got up and pulled the curtains closed and then began looking around to see if any other windows had been left open. Ray said that he was going to get his parents, and I continued to look around the windows, though I'll admit I was walking really slowly. I was pretty on edge at this point but what sent me over the top was when I made my way into the kitchen. As I walked into the kitchen, I stopped in my tracks as I heard the handle on the door shaking, as if someone was trying to open it. I could see the shadow of someone through the frosted glass window on the front door as they stood under the porch light, and I immediately ran back into the living room and yelled for Ray and his parents. Ray's dad came running through the house, and I yelled that they were at the door. He wasted no time getting there and unlocking it, but when he opened the door, no one was on the other side. Before he could close the door, though, Ray's mom came rushing down the hallway with her phone in her hand and tears running down her face. I could hear her telling Ray's father to call the police because they caught the entire incident on camera. When the police arrived, they were shocked to see clear video of Ray's neighbor walking onto his property and up to each window of the house until he found the one that he could watch us through. He apparently stood there watching us for about a half an hour before he appeared to be startled, assumingly by Ray catching him. He then quickly ran around the house and tried to break in before being scared off by the sound of Ray's father running through the house. The officers promptly made their way over to the neighbor's house and knocked on the door. The man pretended to have been sleeping, but the police didn't buy his story, especially not with the proof we had. Ray's neighbor was arrested for trespassing, among other charges. I'm sure I felt bad, but I was too afraid to stay the rest of the night, and Ray's parents ended up driving me home after the police finished up at their house. Now I only sleep at my own house, where I feel the safest. It was the summer of 2009 and we had about a week until school started back up and to celebrate, my mom and dad let me have a sleepover in the camper that we had in our backyard. I was able to have three friends over and we were going to have a small fire in the backyard and then go hang out and play board games in the camper while we listened to music over the speakers. It was a really fun idea and something I loved to do whenever my parents would let me. However, we ended up getting rid of the camper the following year and it's probably for the best. I don't think any of us would dare sleep out in our yard again after what happened that night. Everything had started out great, the fire was a bunch of fun and the mosquitoes were surprisingly not too bad that night, but the evening really started when we all loaded up in the camper and began hanging out without my parents. It was just the four of us and I had my dog Bugles with me. Bugles was a basset hound who was about four years old at the time and he was my best friend for sure. I know for a fact that all my friends and I were thankful that he was there with us that night. Once we were in the camper, we plugged my iPod Nano into the speakers and listened to some music as we played a couple of games of Settlers of Catan with each other and eventually all of us were tired and it was time to go to bed. 
sleeping in the camper was great because we all had our own beds that were surprisingly comfortable to sleep in, and we could keep the AC going all night once we all decided to lie down. Sleep came quickly. However, our dreams would end as quickly as they started once we had all been woken up by the sound of bugles growling. I sat up in the bed and began looking around and I could see Bugles, who was just sitting in front of the door to the camper and growling as if there was something outside. I decided it was better to be safe, so I quietly got out of bed and made my way over to the camper door and made sure that we had locked it. And then I tried to usher Bugles away from the door, but he wouldn't listen to me at all. He was locked onto whatever was on the other side of the camper door. Chills began to run up my body as I looked around at my friends who had also woken up. They all looked just as concerned as I was, but my buddy Robbie, who was there that night, tried to calm us all down by saying it was most likely just an animal walking through the yard and bugles could smell it. That sounded like a good explanation to me, but I decided that I should peek out the window just to make sure that we were safe. I was feeling much better thinking that it was just an animal, so I didn't hesitate to crack the curtains and look out of the camper but what I saw sent me flying backward. I couldn't quite catch my breath to tell my friend what I had just seen at first, and at that moment, Bugles went from growling to barking. He was now standing with his face practically pressed against the door, barking his head off. And when I could find the words, I looked up to my friends and let them know that someone was out there. When I looked out the window, I could see clear as day someone was standing right outside of the camper door. Thankfully, as Bugles continued to bark, we could all hear the sound of whoever it was running off. My friends and I decided that it would be best for us to stay in the camper until it was morning and just make sure the door stayed locked and shut. And that's exactly what we did. We all huddled together at the table and began playing some games again as we tried to keep calm. Thankfully, my dog stayed up all night with us and would not take his attention away from the door. The next morning, we went into the house and explained what happened to my parents, but you could tell that they thought it was just our imagination. All I know is that we never stayed in that camper again, and as I said, we ended up selling it shortly after that because we didn't use it anymore.